Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, praise the Lord. Well, I was thinking this morning about Pastor Mary and how she, uh, she always gets things moving when it comes to the weather. Hallelujah, Jesus, don't you love it? One of her favorite scriptures, not the one for today that she got, but one of her favorites, favorites is Acts 14, 17. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without a witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. That's Acts 14, 17. And, you know, we've just discovered down through the years that God wants us to steward this earth and uh, when there's something happening in the, in the weather that shouldn't be, then we need to use our authority and, and move those things around. Amen? Hallelujah. We've done it, too. And we believe God wants to continually do it. Amen? So remember that when you watch your weather forecast at night and you see there's a storm brewing somewhere. Let's just move it out. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. You know, I didn't put it in my notes. Cliff, would you put uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 up there? 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Thank you, Jesus. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen? I'm just focusing this morning on God is able. God is able. Amen? Hallelujah. Deborah Thorne Francis, we're so glad you're back. And we're so glad God brought you through your surgery and that you are 100% in Jesus' name. Amen? And that you braved the weather today and got out here and came to church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Well, hallelujah, I'm kind of stepping into a, a place that I left off on Wednesday night. You know, I was planning on preaching about four hours on Wednesday night. I totally forgot myself. Yeah. Amen. I, I was on my way, yeah. and we went over time because of it. But praise the Lord. I thought, well, you know what? That's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. There were times when the Apostle Paul did that occasionally, you know. Of course, you know, he had a little more notoriety. Hallelujah. But he did that occasionally. One time, somebody even fell out of the, uh, the window or fell, out, or fell from a high place, fell asleep, and fell down on the floor and died in his service. So thank you, Jesus. We're alive this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I appreciated Pat coming this morning dressed so pretty. Pat, stand up. Let everybody see you this morning. Stand up. What a day to wear red from top to foot, from toe all the way up. Amen. You know, that's I teach that in life class. I walk around my house wrapped up in red blankets and red robes and all kinds of stuff. I love the blood of Jesus. Amen. And you might not have uh, had that intent today when you put that on, but I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus covers us today. And we appreciate the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus over every person. Hallelujah. Okay. Wednesday night, we continued our series on embracing your assignment. Hallelujah. God's talking to us about the things we do and the things that are assigned to be done. Amen. Our assignment. Everybody say, I have an assignment. Embrace your assignment. That is what God is talking about. Amen. And uh, on, on Wednesday night, we talked about his essential partnership with man. I've mentioned it a, a couple of times, but I want to continue to repeat that, that God has an essential partnership with man. So why is God's partnership with man essential? Why has it been essential since, he, since the creation? And again, I did not give you this scripture, Cliff, but put up Genesis 126 in the New King James translation. Hallelujah. Either way, translation, uh, either translation. But God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over... All the earth over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Amen. And so here we see that God gave man, uh, instilled within man in the very person of his created man, authority, rulership, for the purpose of having authority, control, and rulership over the earth. 
And, you know, God never changed his mind about that. Even though Adam fell, God never changed his mind. He says, I am the Lord, I change not. Amen. So it's important that uh, we remember that God gave men authority. Hallelujah. So when God gives something away, he no longer has it. Amen. Hallelujah. So there is a, uh, a lease on planet earth. We're involved in everything God's doing here. And uh, there's coming a time when God will step back and take earth back and uh, establish a thousand-year reign. Christ will establish his millennial reign on this earth. And, uh, you know, he'll come back as man, exercising his authority on planet earth. And that's something you wondered why Jesus on resurrection day went and got his body. Hallelujah. He went and got his body because he's be coming back and he needed his body as man to come back and to rule and reign on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have a privilege being human, being a human being. Amen. In a human body, we've been given authority in the earth. Now, you know, that means that God needs man. God is all powerful. And we are all authoritative. You put the two of us together and there is authority. And there is power. Amen. When we are with God, there is authority and there is power. That was always, has always been his divine combination. That we would work together, co-labor with God. That's been from the day he created man. He created man to co-labor with him. Hallelujah, Jesus. So God needs man. God requires man in order to work in the earth. Amos 3 and verse 7 reveals the necessity of God in using man for his purposes, the necessity of God, co-laboring with man. It says, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Surely, truly, firmly, with certainty. That's what that means. It's a word that means amen. Surely. The Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now, the words, I, I discovered this as I was studying this out in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, does nothing. The Lord does nothing. In the Hebrew, this is two words, does nothing. It's nothing is no thing. Okay? He does no thing. No means no. And thing is the word rhema. Amen? So the Lord does nothing, no thing, unless he reveals his, servant, his secret to his servants of prophets. So the word does nothing, the first meaning, the first on does nothing means cannot, forbidden, and by no means. Cannot, forbidden, and by no means does nothing. He cannot, he is forbidden, and by no means and the second word in does nothing is work required or deed required. So the Lord does nothing. He is forbidden. He cannot. And by no means can he do the work required or the deed required unless first he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. He's forbidden. How, why is he forbid? Why was he and has he always been forbidden to work except he first come into a, a partnership with man. How is that, that that happened? It happened in Genesis 1, when he said, man, you have now received dominion over all the earth, over everything in the earth. It is under your authority. And so God moved out of authority and gave man authority. Hallelujah. This is why in the Old Testament, the prophets were the most feared and respected people in the Old Testament. Did you ever stop and think about that? How powerful the prophets were? Why? Because they received the word from God, spoke it into the earth, and things happened as a result. Amen? And God had said he would do nothing unless he got his word into the earth, and someone heard that word and spoke that word, and then God had the authority to release his power. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you know, I, I'm praising God because we are like God's prophets in the earth today, New Testament. Amen. Those who receive God's word and speak his word. Okay. And, you know, 
God had to come to the Old Testament prophets. He had to visit them. But God made provision for us so that we have a continual flow coming to us and through us of the Word of God by coming and living inside of us. Everybody say the Holy Spirit has a dwelling place. And it's me. God lives in me. That's just not a nice philosophy. You know, that's not a theory. That's not a theory. That's not a doctrine. It's a fact that the Holy Spirit, when he comes inside of you, God lives in you. Wow. You know, I was listening to something by Bill Johnson, and he said that when, uh, and I don't know any of this to be true. Bonnie would know more about medical things. But he talked about heart transplants. And if a heart that is going to be transplanted into a, a, a recipient of that heart, if they took that heart and they placed that heart uh, right next to the old heart, the bad heart, before they transplanted it, if they touched those two hearts together, they would start beating in syn- uh, synchronized beating. They would beat exactly the same. All of a sudden, they would change and they would begin to beat together in the same heartbeat if you just touched them. And he talked about how, the, how we touch the heart of God. And we be, when we touch the heart of God, hallelujah, our heart begins to beat with the, with the desires of God and with the plans of God and the purposes of God, the things that God wants to see happen in our life. We begin to take on God's heartbeat. Isn't that good? I tell you, that is awesome because we have divine appointments. We have divine assignments to work together with God. And I want to have his desires. I want to I wanna be one with his heartbeat. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I think back and, you know, God's always had major, major assignments. We touched on that on Wednesday night for about two hours or three. Hallelujah. Well, that's an exaggeration, but I was on my way. Hallelujah. But God's always had major assignments. And we'll talk about the assignment that he gave to Moses in a moment. But I thought of one of the, the, the most important assignments was the assignment that he gave to the Virgin Mary. If you recall, God sent an angel to this young girl, Mary. You know, she was thought to possibly be 14, 15 years old. And he brought, this angel brought to Mary an invitation to work together with God. An invitation to join God in what he was about to do. And if she accepted that invitation, then she would bring forth a child, and that child would bring salvation to the world. Hallelujah. So, you know, when God brought that message to Mary, she would then be required to respond to that invitation. And in the words that were spoken, God actually let her know that he was depending on her. Okay? In Luke 137, God declared this through this angel, For nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible with God. Now, that sounds like God can just do anything. But this word nothing, again, this word nothing, actually I brought this word out earlier and it was at the wrong time on, on a wrong scripture. But this word nothing is no thing, no rhema, nothing, no thing, no rhema shall be without ability. That is what it means. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing will be impossible with God. No thing will be impossible with God. No rhema, no word that is spoken to you from heaven, no word that you receive out of God's precious word, nothing that he says to you will be without ability. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means nothing that God speaks, no freshly spoken word to you, is without power and ability. Hallelujah. Now, this was saying to Mary, God is well able to make this happen to you, that you will bring forth a son and you will call his name Jesus. God has the power to do this. And there was in that invitation the opportunity for her to respond. And, of course, then Mary said, be it Unto me, according to your word. 
be it unto me. Let it be done to me according to your word. I think, you know, Lord, that's where I want to stand with God on every assignment that he gives. Let it be done to me according to your word. You say go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let it be done unto me according to your word. Pour out your grace. God is able to make all grace abound toward me and toward you. All we have to do is receive that invitation and accept it to work together with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't that good? Everybody say, God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. In every situation I'm dealing with right now, God has the power to change it. God has the power to release the blessing over my life. God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. He is all powerful. Thank you, Jesus. And I accept his invitation. I'm going to labor together with him in the spirit. We're going to see this thing manifest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to use my authority and God's going to release his power. I'm going to speak to my body and command it to obey God. When I start having symptoms come on my body, I'm going to tell those symptoms, you lying devil, get off my body in the name of Jesus. When my finances begin to waver, I begin to have difficulty in my finances, I'm going to talk to my finances. And I'm going to say, checkbook, you fill up, you be filled. Bank account, you overflow in the name of Jesus. I call in the finances, financial streams of income from the north, the east, the south, and the west to you, to you, to you in Jesus' name. Streams of income, come to me. I remember one fellow, you know, at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, he just began to talk about money come to you. Money cometh. Money cometh. And he got the whole church declaring money cometh. People thought, well, y'all are crazy. That's that prosperity gospel. Listen to me. God is all into you having more than enough. There's a work to be done out there. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we give our all into that work. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So if it's not flowing to me, I'm going to begin to command it to flow. Amen. I'm going to begin to speak forth the word of God and release the authority in that word. I'm going to release that authority through my voice. I'm going to release the authority that opens the gates of power. Hallelujah. You know, there's a scripture. Put this one up, Cliff. I didn't have it in my notes either. We might be going on about three or four hours today too. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 16, 19. In New King James Translation. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, there's another translation that I really, really like, and it's not an easy one to find. It's William's translation. You won't have that. William's translation, and what it says, I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you forbid on earth must be what is forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth must be what is permitted in heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth must be what is forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth must be what is permitted in heaven. When we begin to get a hold of that, hallelujah, Jesus, we discover we're the ones who are permitting stuff. Well, God allowed it. No, listen, God didn't allow it. We permitted it. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We don't have to permit it. We can turn that around. Well, it's pretty far progressed. I'm not real sure I can get out of this one. Listen, God can turn anything around. God can turn anything around. He will even redeem the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, and the caterpillar have consumed. He'll redeem years. How many would like to see those years redeemed? Come on now. I'll tell you, I'm standing on that. Amen. I'm going back in time and picking up a few more years. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, God wants to see some things change, but he's got to have somebody that will work with him to do it. Hallelujah. Now, I want to go back to where I left off Wednesday night, and I want to read a little bit about this man named Moses. God chose a man named Moses to join him. 
in what he was about to do. He was about to deliver Israel out of Egypt, and he needed a man to do it with him. So in chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, he says that he's seen the oppression of the people of Egypt, and then we jump over to verse 8, Exodus 3, verse 8. So he says, I've seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. And then he said, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now he's talking to Moses, who is a... uh, You know, he has fled from Egypt after murdering a man. He's fled years before. He's been out of Egypt now for 40 years out there in the wilderness as a shepherd. And uh, God appears to him in this burning bush. And he says, Moses, this is the deal. I've come down to deliver them, my people, out of the hand of the Egyptians. And I bet you Moses was excited thinking, oh, praise God. Oh, I'm so relieved. God has come to do something about that for my people. And in Egypt, you know, and then in verse 11, you know, God went on to say, or verse 10, rather, he went on to say, this is chapter 3, verse 10, he said, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You know, I think that probably took Moses' breath away. He probably staggered a little bit, stepped back. We're talking over two and a half million people. And God's saying, look, I've come down to deliver my people Israel. He's thinking, hallelujah. And then he says, and oh, by the way, I'm sending you to do it. Hallelujah. See, God had to have a man to work with. He couldn't just go deliver his people Israel out of Egypt. He had no authority to do that. But he needed a man who would exercise that authority, who would release that authority, and then God could release his power. Hallelujah. Now, Exodus 3.11 tells us Moses response as he staggered there before God you know he responded and he said who am I I appreciate we sing that song I am who you say I am everybody say I am who he says I am I am who you say I am Lord I have what you say I have and I can do what I what you say I can do hallelujah thank you Lord so here hallelujah he says Who am I? And in the Hebrew, the who has an automatic question mark built into it. Who? Me? Hallelujah. This is what he was saying. Who, me? Thank you. Who am I? And then, of course, uh, you know, God has to counter all of Moses' uh, 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 desire not to do what God has invited him to do. Moses is, is really struggling with this invitation. And I think that the church at large, has been struggling for years with this invitation to accept the invitation that Jesus gave us when he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, hallelujah, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And oh, by the way, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In other words, you can't do this assignment by yourself. I'm going to be working with you. Amen? So we have to understand that, number one, God has chosen you. He's chosen you to enter into a, an intimacy with him, an intimate relationship with him. Everybody knows that? that that is his number one call. He has called us to be with him. Number one, God wants to hang out with you. He wants to hang out with me. Number two, he has called you strategically because of your position, where you are right now, he has called you to influence and to release his power and authority in that area of influence where you are. Hallelujah. He wants to have the ability... He wants to have the ability to transform people in their lives, people that are hurting in your area of influence, people who, if you're in the school system, people who are teachers, people who are students, mothers and fathers of students. He's wanting you to have influence in those areas. He's wanting you to work together with him to release his authority, his his power through your authority. Amen? Well, you know... Moses knew that he could not take on this assignment by himself, but God assured him. He said, I am that I am. I am the one you need me to be. I am everything you need me to be. Now, Denise got a word this past week. 
Hallelujah. On April the 2nd, she received it. And she receives a lot of words about the I am. This is really big that God, that God has you understand that he is everything you need him to be. No matter what circumstance you're looking at today, he is the answer to that. Amen. That is why he gave us all of his names. Jehovah Shalom, I am your peace. Jehovah Nisi, I am your banner. Jehovah Roe, I am your shepherd. Amen. Jehovah, hallelujah. What else? Sitke Nu, I am your righteousness. M. Kadesh, I am your sanctification. Anybody else got one? Shama. Shama, I'm ever present. I'm with you. I see. Jehovah Jireh. Oh, how could we forget Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Amen. So God is our everything. He is the I am. This is who I am, he said. Well, she received this word, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and I am the end. Hallelujah. The Alpha is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the Omega is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So he's really talking about the Alpha and Omega being the word of God to you. The first letter and the last in his word to you. I am the beginning and the end. I am an all-consuming fire. The enemy tried to destroy Bathstrop with a catastrophic fire, and he could not, for he is defeated. Aren't you grateful that the devil could not stop you with that fire? How many were affected by that fire in 2011? Yes. Well, thank God that he gave us everything we needed to overcome that situation. He says, I am, I am, I am the great I am. The fires of revival that have been stirring in the hearts of my people are burning brighter and brighter. Miracles that have I, I've been performing are increasing and increasing. The time is now for you, my children, for you to join me in my move. I desire for my church to participate in this great move of my spirit. It is not the time to sit and watch me move. It is not the time to stand back as a spectator. It is time to join me. You say to me, Lord, I am not worthy. I do not know how to participate in your move. And I say to you, my precious children, that I have made you worthy. I've made you worthy through my blood, the blood of my son that he shed for you. You are righteous through that blood. You are worthy. You are loved. Ask me to show you how to participate in this move, and I will. The time is now for you to yield to my spirit more and more. It is time for you to take the time to listen to my voice more and more as you seek me and my plan. Your family and your circumstances will change. They will be taken care of. The mountains will move out of the way. The angels that are standing at attention will begin to work on your behalf. They are waiting for you to speak my word. Revival fires are stoking. Fan the flame in my presence and in my word. My plan for BCOC shall come to pass. I am your all-consuming fire, and I am moving. And I invite you to join me in this move and to join me now, says the Lord. Go ahead and lift your hands up to the Lord and thank him that he's right in the middle of your life. Right in the middle of your life, and he's doing a work in your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've spoken over our lives. Thank you for every prophecy, every prophecy that has been given over our lives, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we're moving with you into the fullness, into the fullness of what you have in store for us. Thank you, Lord. It is your desire, Father, to release all of your provision into our lives right now, now, right now in the name of Jesus. You are able you are powerful, and we release that through our authority right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Someone is looking at a staggering situation with your taxes. Right now, know that he is able. He is able right now. 
with your taxes. He is able. We release you, Lord, in your ability and your power. We release you now over this situation to turn it around, to turn it around in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Someone has discovered a cyst in your body this past week. A cyst, a a, a knot, a small knot in your body. And the Holy Spirit is restoring and taking that thing away and restoring you today, right now. Back, back, back to where it was before it ever came. Amen? Right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, as we watch Moses lead these people out of Egypt, he comes to the Red Sea. They're departing from Egypt, and this is the great obstacle, the great obstacle. You know, the devil loves to put a great obstacle in your path. He loves to try to hinder you from getting to where God is taking you, but he cannot, he cannot do it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. The gates of hell are not an offensive weapon of the devil. They're defensive. That means the devil knows you are after his case. You are coming to pull him down. You are coming to move him out. Hallelujah. His gates will not prevail against you. That is good news. So they get to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea, as they're looking at the vast sea before them, it's eight miles across. They can't even see that far. It is so big in front of them with mountains on either side of the sea. So it looks or it appears that Moses has brought them to a situation that is going to be a total bloodbath for Israel, utter destruction, an impossibility. There's no way to get across. There's no answer to this problem. Somebody in here today may have a situation in your life right now. It appears there is no solution. Hallelujah. If that is you, I want you to just lift your hands up to the Lord right now. If you're dealing with something and it appears there is no solution, there is an obstacle before you, there is no solution in the natural, in the natural, in the natural. You've come to a place where that's it, that's it. Okay, we're acknowledging it right now, Lord, that we're here at the Red Sea this morning. We're right here at the Red Sea this morning. This Red Sea is a barrier to any forward progress. It appears to be a barrier to any forward progress. And Egypt was pressing in hard from behind to block Israel's retreat. So it did not look good from the natural standpoint. It seems that there was a closed door in front of them. The door had closed. They thought they were following the Lord, but now it appears that there's a closed door. You know, we talk today about open doors and closed doors. God opens doors and God closes doors. We hear a lot of that. God opened this door for me. God closed this door. But what we have a tendency to do is when things get hard, when things get difficult or it looks impossible, we tend to say, well, God closed the door. We automatically think God closed the door when God didn't close the door. Some things are just going to loom up in front of you to try to stop your forward progress, and you're going to have to take authority over that, and you're going to have to pull it down, and you're going to have to move the mountain. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Hallelujah. So they're looking at this seemingly closed door. And I want you to understand that God brought them to this place. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. The Apostle Paul says this about an open door. Everybody say open doors are not always easy. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. He says, for a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me there. He's talking about in Ephesus, a great and promising one, and there are many adversaries. And there are many adversaries. He said, a wide door has opened, but there's a lot of stuff happening to try to stop me. But there's a lot going on here. Enemies are trying to keep me from moving through that door. 
but it's not going to stop me. It's a wide door of opportunity, he said. Paul is all excited about this wide door. Why? Because he knows he has authority and God has power. He's going through the door not in his own ability, but in the ability of God because God is able. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, in Exodus, as they're looking at this Red Sea in front of them, Moses apparently begins to cry out to God because in Exodus 14, verse 15, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Huh. Why do you cry to me? Anybody ever been looking at a Red Sea? Some of you raised your hands. You're looking at situations that are, if not difficult, absolutely impossible in the natural. And God says, hey, why are you crying to me? Why do you cry to me? And then he says, tell the children of Israel to go forward. What? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And then he talks to Moses, and he says, now you, Moses. He doesn't say you, but you is understood because he says, but lift up your rod. So he says, but you lift up your rod, and you stretch out your hand over the sea, and you divide it, Moses. You do something about this. You take authority over this situation. You know it's got to change. God said, you already know it's got to change. There's something in somebody's family, something in your home, something in your life that needs to change. Something needs to change. Let me see, show a hand. Something needs to change. Something needs to change. Something needs to change. Something needs to change. God says, you do something about it. You begin to speak to it. You begin to speak to it. I remember recently Pastor Scott gave us a testimony that God gave him something that he had to start commanding every day in prayer, just a statement of command every day in prayer over his family. He had to start commanding that over his family, and it was going to cause a breakthrough. It was going to cause an absolute breakthrough of the power of God. Just a statement. Hallelujah. A command. You know, Isaiah 45, 11, God, in, it, it sounds audacious to some people to even think that God would say this. But God says, concerning my sons, he's talking about his sons, and he says, he says, go ahead and put that up there, Isaiah 45, 11. The Holy One of Israel and his maker asked me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands. You command me. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, I would never do that. Listen, God wants somebody to work with him. Of course we move in humility. Of course we, are, we know who we are. We know, as Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. We know that. Everybody say, without him I can do nothing. But I do have authority, and he does have power, and I need to release my authority so he can release his power. So he said, you command me. Oh, my goodness. Woo! Glory be to you, God. So he says, you, Moses, lift up your rod. You stretch out your hand over the sea and you divide it. Do something about this. And Moses did it. He stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. All that night... I had not planned to stay up all night for this assignment. There is no way I'm holding a rod over the sea all night. All night? How many of you have had a nighttime experience? Amen. I'm talking, I'm talking a, a, an assignment in the midst of the darkness in your life. An assignment in the midst of some darkness pressing in on your life. The darkness of some affliction or the darkness of some, something else. Hallelujah. And God said all night, all night, all night, hallelujah, he was to stand with that rod all night, with that authority through the darkness. He was to uphold that rod of authority in the darkness, no matter how pressing the darkness don't you know? I mean, here was Egypt right there behind them. God had to come down in a pillar of fire to stop them from catching them at the, at the sea. 
He had to hold Egypt back. And here's Moses holding it, that rod over the sea. And don't you know Moses was thinking, all night? Come on, God, you created the heavens and the earth. This shouldn't be that hard. How many of you know it was not hard for God to roll back the sea? I mean, we get to thinking, oh, this is way too hard for you, God. You know, I need, I need a new organ. I need a new organ. This, oh, God, this is way too hard for you. I need you, to, I need you to fix this problem in my body. But the doctors say it's unfixable. Some of you have even had stuff taken out of your body that you need to have put back in your body. And God says, hey, that's not too hard for me. I am able. We're just going to have to start commanding it back in there. Hallelujah, I just command it back in there. In the name of Jesus, I command it back in there. You need it? Command it back in there. He says, command ye me. Well, you start commanding that thing to change, and you're literally loosing him and his power to do it. You have to begin to exercise your authority in that darkness. Ooh, glory be to you, Jesus. And don't receive the diagnosis, and especially not the prognosis. Prognosis means the outcome. The outcome in God is always life and that more abundantly. Come on now. We know where we're going. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he stretched out his hand all night, and, and it says, and while he's stretching out his hand, God's got him using his authority with the rod. It says the Lord calls the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land. He made the sea into dry land. I like what Exodus 15, 8 says. It says God blew his nose, and the waters were gathered together. It was that simple. God blew his nose. By the blast of his nostrils, the waters were gathered together. By the blast of his nostrils, he just blew his nose. Listen, your problem is not too hard for God. All he has to do is blow his nose. Let's put this thing in perspective. Come on now. Hallelujah, Jesus. They came through the Red Sea with zero casualties. Hallelujah. Now, it wasn't that great for Egypt. They perished in the sea. But Israel came through with zero casualties. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's presence and power were right there doing the work. Hallelujah. Moses' rod lifted the Holy Spirit working. We speak the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit's working. He's not afar off. He's not going to visit us. He lives inside of us. We are to pour out of his spirit from the inside out. We're to lift up our rod, our hand of authority. We're to lay our hands on the sick, and they will recover. We're to speak to that dead body, and we're to say, life, come back. We're to say, come into your body in the name of Jesus. We're to meditate. If you say, I don't believe it, meditate on Jesus raising the dead until you see yourself doing it. The Word of God will always take you to an encounter. If you stay in the Word of God, the purpose of the written Word is to take you in to the living Christ, the living Word. It is to lead you into an encounter with God. So every time you're standing on the Word and you're meditating in the Word, you're moving into the living Word, the presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus. That is what the written word does, is it carries you into an encounter with God. Every time you need an encounter with God, you go to the word, and you begin to declare the word and continue to declare the word. And you say, how long? Until I have my encounter with God. Until I know the presence is there, the power is there, that I've received every provision because he said, I shall provide in every situation everything you need. I am that I am. Ooh, glory be to you, Jesus. Now listen, Jesus said this in John 14, 12. First he declared, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. So God was including us in this great work that he wants to do in the earth today. And in this, in this very same chapter, verses 13 and verse 14, he actually says something else. He actually gives us a promise. 
If I've got it in my notes, I may not have put it. Yeah, here it is. He said, whatever you ask in my name, this follows the works that I do, you will do also, and greater works than these will you do. And then he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That I will do. Jesus said, that I will do. Whatever you ask in my name, you are going to release your authority by asking in his name. And he says, I'm going to come behind that. I will do it. I will do it. You're working together with God. The Holy Spirit is performing his purposes and plans through you. When you reach out, use your authority and release his power. And you can do it. You don't have to get on the phone and say, Pastor Mary, can you come and pray? Everybody say, I am who he says I am. I have what he says I have. And I can do what he says I can do because God is able. And he makes all grace abound toward me. You make all grace, all ability, all power abound toward me. That's what that word able means. It comes from the root that means powerful. God is able. He is powerful. He is able. He is powerful. He's made every provision for you, and he will work together with you for it to come into manifestation in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Great needs. There are people with great needs in here today, great physical needs some need strength. Some need healing. We need deliverance from every demonic force that would try to come against our health, that would try to come against anything. And Jesus says we have been delivered through his authority and power. We can release that deliverance today. He said you have been delivered. Colossians 1.13, who has delivered us from the authority, power, control, and dominion of darkness we have been delivered, and he wants you to experience it. He wants to release the power for that right now. He is able right now. If you want that ability, that power to be released, his authority right now is going to be released. I'm going to release his authority. I want you to receive it right now. I want you to receive it right now. For your need, you came in here with a need today. I want you to receive the provision from heaven right now for your specific, unique, unique need right now. Release right now. I release right now. I release right now. Flow right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, flow over each of these. Go ahead and express to God your need right now. You, this is a personal thing. You're telling him your need right now. And you're saying, Lord, you are able. And she is releasing. We are all releasing right now in this place the provision of heaven, the fullness of of the power of God coming on you, Timothy, to transform that situation today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Tina, right now, in the name of Jesus. Kathy, Uraba City, Stephen and Lisa, take it, take it. Margarita, Uraba Sana, Nan, hallelujah. Every one of you, take it, take it, take it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the provision is flowing. The power of heaven is released right now in this place. In this place, grace, 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 grace is upon you right now. Grace is upon you. Grace is over your finances right now. Grace is over your family right now. Grace is over your family. Grace is over your family. God wants to bring couples together today in one vision, in one vision, one vision. God says where there is dual vision, where there are two different visions, there is division. Where there are dual visions, two separate, different, completely different visions, that dual vision creates division. He wants to bring you into one vision right now. One vision right now. One vision. One vision right now. One vision. One vision right now. One vision right now. No dual vision.
visions, one vision, one vision, restoration for every family, dual vision will not happen any longer. No more dual vision. No more dual vision. We want one vision. We want one, one vision. Thank you, Jesus. Your vision, Lord, yours over this family right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take it for all of you who are struggling in any way in, the, in your marriage situation. Take that one vision, one vision. Thank you, Lord. And God wants you to express that, express that vision to one another so that you get on the same page with your vision. You're to express that vision to one another so you get on the very same page. You're going to have to make some adjustments. There's going to have to be some adjustments. Some adjustments. Thank you, Jesus. Supernatural adjustments right now. We declare supernatural adjustments happening in your marriages right now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural adjustments. Thank you, Lord. We want to be on the same page. Amen. The same page with the same vision. Thank you, Lord. With the same assignment, moving together in unity and harmony. It is there as we are in unity that God releases the blessing. provision from heaven like a waterfall right now like Niagara Falls I see it like Niagara Falls like God's opening the con conduit and the waterfall is, is coming it's coming it's shooting out like Niagara Falls the fi financial provision is shooting out shooting out not just rivers not streams not rivers but we're talking about a Niagara Fall experience right now in the name of Jesus more than enough more than enough the overflow situations right now. Take it by faith. Take it by faith right now. Take it by faith. Every provision, every need, every need totally met by the Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every provision has been made. Every provision has been made. God wants to give you an assurance right now. Take his assurance. Take his assurance right now. That's his assurance, his supernatural assurance. His assurance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Laura, can you give us a song right now in the spirit? Lead unto me according to your We release fullness and wholeness, fullness of provision in the river. Oh, it's a river flooding, cascading over the mountain of God. Oh, greater than your eyes.
just kept going and going. It started as we were just singing over the mountains and the sea. The river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. So I will daily lift my hands. And I will always sing of when your love came down. And I begin to see like an eagle just soaring right now just next to that waterfall. And then I get, it's like he took me on a, a journey where I just got closer to it and closer and where I could hear it, where I could feel it. I could feel that water just shooting everywhere, just spraying, spraying. And it got closer and I was closer, so close. And it was like, just coming down the mountain and it got up higher and higher and higher. And I could see just a little bit over the edge, barely see over the edge where it was coming from the sea of glass and that is the same river the same river that we get into each Sunday is the river it is the river that comes from the throne of God and the Lamb of God and coming out of the throne is the river out of the sea of glass and he showed me that it was cascading over the mountain of God and bigger than Victoria Falls is only a pinch it's nothing. It's nothing compared to the river of God coming over the sea of glass. And in that river, every need, every provision, every dream, every desire of God is yours in Jesus' name. Woo! The Lord spoke to my heart and said, the Lord is cleansing someone's blood right now. I see hepatitis having been an issue in your life. The Lord is cleansing your blood right now. I can see. Cleansing your blood right now. His blood flowing mm -hmm. like that river through your veins right now. Mm -hmm. Communicable diseases. Communicable diseases. Something that you received in time past that has stayed in your blood, that has remained in your blood. God is cleansing your blood right now. Cleansing your blood right now. Cleansing your blood. I believe herpes, he's saying herpes is being completely driven from your body in Jesus' name right now by the blood of Jesus. No hepatitis, no herpes, none, none in the name of Jesus. Wiped out every trace, wiped out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's him moving on your body right now. Any sexually transmitted disease being wiped out right now, right now. Sexually transmitted disease wiped out right now in the name of Jesus. Wiped out right now. Going, 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 gone, gone. Right there it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're in this place this morning and you've never really had that relationship that people have told you about with the Lord, maybe you've never, never experienced Him in an intimate way. You've never had a close place with God where you knew that as you spoke with God, He was speaking with you where you moved together, where you talked together, where you shared together. You've never experienced that. You've never had that. But it is your desire. It is your desire. God is putting that desire in your heart this morning. God wants you to be able to step into a deep and personal relationship with Him, a relationship that is more important to you and more viable, more alive than anything you've ever experienced anywhere else. And here we are right now. And he's knocking on the door. He stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. I will come into him. 
If that is you this morning, I just want you to lift your hand up to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, that's me. I want you to come into me. I want you, Jesus, to become Lord and Savior of my life. I see those hands. I want you to become Lord and Savior of my life. Now, if you're born of God already, don't put your hands up right now. Let's wait upon the Lord. Don't put them up. I know you want to worship the Lord, but let's put our hands up before the Lord. If we're saying to him, Lord, I want you to come into that relationship. I want to enter in with you. I want to open the door to you right now. I want to open the door to you right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Move over this people. Draw them to you, Father. Draw them to you. Draw them to you. Thank you, Lord. Draw them to you. He wants to come. He wants to be Savior. He wants to be Lord of your life. If you have lifted your hand this morning and you say, yes, Lord, I need you. I need this relationship. I need you, God, to come and live within me. If you've lifted your hand to receive Jesus this morning, I just want you to lift it again right now and say, that was me, Lord, and this is me now. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I believe, Father, right now, that you want that relationship and you are coming to me this morning. You have pursued me and you have brought me to this place. I see those hands right now. You've lifted your hands back here in faith that Jesus has stood at the door of your heart. He's been knocking. He's been knocking and knocking. And now today you're saying, Lord, I'm opening that door. I want you to come up here and let me pray for you as we open that door. Come right up here and let's pray. God's going to come right in. He's going to flood into your life. So today we're going to pray together. Let's say this together. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this divine appointment today right here in this place. I yield my heart to you. I give my life to you. I turn from all that I know that was wrong. By your grace, Lord, I begin to move with you. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart today and take control of my life. From this day forward, I will walk in a deep and wonderful relationship with you. Right now, I believe you are coming into my heart right now, right now, right now. There you are. There you are. Oh, there you are. There you are. There you are. That's him. There he is. That's him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Taking control of your life right now. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never, no, never. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never, no, never. That's him. I see that Red Sea split wide open and I see you going through it. I see you going through it. I see you dropping stuff behind as you go. I see you leaving stuff behind as you go. I see you being delivered from things that had tormented your life, that have tried to hold you back. He's delivering you right now. Never again, never again. He's saying never again, never again. That's the Holy Ghost all over you. Right there he is. Thank you, Lord 
Jesus, there you are, right there you are. Oh, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, take control of his life, Lord. Complete control, give it over, give it all over, all of it, all of it, all of it. See it all going, see it all going. That's him. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him. He's taking you through, he's taking you through to the other side. He said, let us cross over to the other side. Let us cross over to the other side. That's the power of heaven. That's the power of heaven all over you. The power of heaven all over you, brother. Jesus is Lord of your life. He is Lord of your life. He is Lord of your life. Thank you, Lord. He is Lord. You are Lord of his life, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's gone, brother. It's gone. It's gone. Everything you were trying and struggling over, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Now he's flooding through you with joy unspeakable. He's joyful. He's happy over you. The word says he dances over you with joy. He's releasing his joy over you right now. Thank you, Jesus. A whole new direction for your life. A whole new direction. You say, what is it, Lord? What is it? He's telling you. He's going to tell you. He's going to tell you. A whole new direction. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much. You said all the angels of heaven rejoice when someone comes to you, Lord, and their life turns around. All the angels of heaven rejoice. He's all over you, brother. He's all over you. That's the Holy Spirit all over you. He's all over you. That's him. That's a Holy Spirit. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. You're never.